So as I was saying, welcome to this uh, first of a kind event that we host uh, as, um, as, um, as an online uh, English language uh, school. Uh, it's it. I'm 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 quite proud that this is happening because uh, usually it would have events like this would have only taken place, uh, say, in a in, in, in a, a university, uh, specifically in English departments where there are you know such meetings where you get an audience talking about subjects in English and discussing something in the English language and it's not the case here right we can we're, we're doing it and uh, uh, I'm proud of that I'm proud that the, we're, we're, we're helping raise this uh, uh, linguistic culture help or give people a platform a chance to talk about something um, in English because it, it's a uniting thing that, that all of us are talking in in, 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 in English instead of uh, of uh, uh, French or, or, or uh, the topic of this uh, discussion is quite interesting. I mean, every day, uh, loads of Moroccan youth risk their very life. They hop on on fishing boats and try to reach Europe. They're so fed up with this country and they, they, they think that there's absolutely that can be done in here and that there are no opportunities and that one cannot make it. And that's, a, uh, that's something that's so deeply uh, uh, engraved in their mind and in their subconsciousness that they just don't, do not consider the opposite. And I can say this with certainty because I have been an, a high school uh, English language teacher for the past 11 years. And this is something that I would discuss with my students often. I would ask them, would, would, you, like to, would you like to stay here in this country and do something? Or, and almost every time, almost everybody raises their hand saying that we want to leave. We want a chance abroad. We don't want to do anything. We don't want anything to do. Uh, in this country because they believe that there are no chances and that uh, opportunities are on the other side of the of the uh, of the of the uh, uh, Mediterranean in the European country so it's a it's it's a serious issue well we're arguing the opposite well, hopefully by the end of this event we'll uh, uh, come to a conclusion that one can definitely make it in this country uh, because a lot of people are making it. But it'll be a tough thing to argue. It'll be a tough conclusion to reach because first, you know, one would have to define what success is, what making it means, right? Mm. Uh, and then talk, talking about uh, uh, what it is that, uh, that stands in the way of that. What, what is it that makes people not able to make it in this country? And we have we've tried to devise uh, an efficient way to allow everybody who is participating in this event to have a say and to discuss and to talk in English. And it's not going to be lecture mode at all. I mean, forgive the lengthy introduction, but it's not going to be that way. Uh, 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 there will be there will be a, 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 a group of breakout rooms of separate rooms in which uh, every eight to ten members will uh, ho will have a, 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 a three kinds of discussions uh, moderated by one of our teachers uh, and so we try to divide the, the all of you right participants into these breakout rooms so that you can have. Uh, mm, ample opportunity and ample time to talk and to and uh, and, and and discuss. Uh, 
but that will come that's the later stage of this event first thing i'm going to do and i'm going to stop right now is i'll give the floor to zubair who will introduce himself and will introduce today's guests we have a very interesting guest today i'm, I'm sure um, most of you are already familiar with uh, with the, with the person i'm talking about because we've made we've sent you a a, a link to a to a Hespress video talking about the, the, the this man and, uh, and, and it, it must have given you an idea about who he is, what he does in this country. We're honored to have him today with us. We're honored. Um, and uh, so that's how it's going to be. He's going to deliver a, a short presentation and then it'll be a session of Q&A. You'll have uh, an opportunity to ask him questions. Uh, and then we'll move to that uh, final uh, phase of breakout discussion rooms. So again, I welcome, I welcome all of you, those who have just joined, and it's a pleasure to have everybody on board, and I'll uh, give the mic to uh, Mr. Zubair Jabran. Okay, can you hear me, everybody? Yeah. Mohamed, can you hear me? Loud and clear, yes. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, yes. hello, guys. I am uh, Zubair Jabran. I think we've inter I've interacted with every single one of you, either on the phone or on WhatsApp. Um, um, I, I just want to introduce our guest today uh, using a story, the story of how I met him, and I think this is uh, relevant to today's uh, topic. So I was invited to this uh, event by a friend of mine, uh, Ryan, uh, Andrew McNaughton. Uh, he's an American uh, friend uh, living in uh, Casablanca, and he told me he wanted to uh, introduce me to someone. So he was talking about Ryan. You know, we, we he introduced me to him. We shook hands, and as soon as I, you know, I really looked at him. I, I'm like, I think I have seen you somewhere. And he's like, Really? Uh, where? Uh, and I said, I think it's, it was in a, in a video. And uh, Ryan told me, uh, and correct me, Ryan, if I'm wrong, he said, this is the first time that anyone has recognized me uh, from a video. And that was two years ago. And uh, we became friends on Facebook. And uh, I saw him uh, evolve and grow into the successful person that he is today uh, uh, with the content that he's been creating about different things related to uh, business and motivation and so forth. And I saw him, uh, uh, you know, build a network of, uh, uh, of, of, of Moroccans on, on, on social uh, networks, especially uh, LinkedIn, where he's, uh, you know, you can call him an influencer. And uh, that's it. So I think uh, Ryan is an answer of today's question, can one make it individually in, Mor uh, in, in Morocco? And he's been, uh, you know, he did make it despite the uh, you know, disadvantage, the obvious disadvantage that's involved uh, in coming, in, in being a foreigner living in a totally different cultural context. And, uh, but he's not going to talk about himself today. He's going to, to talk about uh, uh, other Moroccans that have come from um, uh, different uh, or disadvantaged culture or uh, social context uh, and that have made it despite of this disadvantage. So uh, I invite you everybody to uh, listen uh, carefully, to, to take notes and write questions as you listen so we can enrich this conversation uh, through Q&A session. Uh, thank you everybody and uh, Ryan. Thank you so much Zubir. Thank you very much for, for To sharing a few things and then
abroad or some of the disadvantages of being a foreigner in a new land and some of the things you would miss from leaving Morocco. But I have addressed briefly some of those other things in, in videos on, on YouTube. So I'm assuming that you're staying in Morocco. Now that might be because you aren't able to get access to another nation. Maybe you, you wish you could leave, but you're, you don't have the finances or you don't have the visa. Or maybe you want to stay in Morocco because of family commitments. You know, you might have a, a role that you play that you feel I, I would be abandoning my family if I were to, to leave. Or you might just want to stay because you love the country and you see the opportunities, you want to help make your country a better place. You recognize there's problems, but you'd rather roll up your sleeves and contribute and try to make a difference than just run away and escape from them. Whatever your reasoning is, uh, this presentation is focused on staying in Morocco and seeking to answer the question, can you make it in Morocco? Now, Mohammed brought up a really good point in that, what do we mean by making it? And that, that's a, a question I didn't include in, in my presentation either is, well, how do you define success? And I didn't think through you know, the, the impact and the meaning and the significance and the purpose of our lives and why we're here. I'm just using a very secular, kind of well understood definition of making it, meaning some sort of success in society, whether that's monetary success or you know, um, creating a business, creating wealth, creating um, a comfortable life for you and your loved ones. So that's what I've, I've sort of just made those big assumptions. Can you make it in Morocco? Now, my answer is a resounding yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Many people have done it. So why can't you be among them? Okay, now, is it easy to make it in Morocco? No. Is it possible? Yes. Okay, now there's a, a gym, uh, an exercise facility, a gym near my house, and it has a sign by the road and it reads results or excuses, you choose. Okay, results or excuses, you choose. And what they're saying is, you know what it would take to become healthier, to get fit, to get into shape. All of us know it's, it's not new information that hey, if we exercise regularly, if we go to the gym and do some cardio and we do some weights and we take some courses, if we hired a trainer, if we watched what we ate, if we drank more water, if we quit smoking, we know these things would bring results. We know it would make us healthier. We know we would sleep deeper at night. We know we would look better. We'd have more confidence, more energy. We'd look in the mirror and see changes taking place over time. We know this. We know we can choose results. And some of us desire those changes. We'd like to be fitter and healthier and stronger and look better. But we have our reasons. We have excuses. So the information is there. The opportunity is there. And we really get to choose how much do I want it? Am I going to do what it takes to get results? Or am I going to lean back on my excuses? And I think it's a relevant example for what we're talking about here, making it in Morocco. There are opportunities, but because there's obstacles, because it's not simple, we can sometimes be tempted to make excuses, to blame and point the finger and to not take responsibility. Okay, so I can make a list of some of the obstacles that you face developing a career in Morocco. They're legitimate challenges, legitimate, difficult things that you face. But one of them is high unemployment. You know, I can see from some of the faces that have their video turned on that we have a lot of young people, a lot of young professionals, students. Um, educated young people have the highest rate of unemployment in Morocco. And sometimes it reaches as much as a, a quarter of the population. So there's all these macroeconomic factors that make it difficult for educated young Moroccans to find a job. There's a very, very high unemployment rate. Okay? Um, there's also nepotism. Okay? A lot of people complain about that, which is when somebody just hires their nephew or hires their brother or hires somebody in their family, 
even though they're not really qualified for the job. And it's, it's just not fair. And there's people who call in favors and pull strings and CVs are moved to the top of the pile. And you might not get a job because you don't have a parent that's well connected or you don't have the right last name. You don't have these, this family status or you weren't born into the right class and that can hurt your opportunities. Okay? Another thing is there's, there's a real lack of part-time jobs. So in, in other countries, it can be easy, even as a teenager, even when you're 15, 16 years old, to begin getting some work experience. And when you're taking a break from high school, you can work in the summer and you don't make great money, but you do make some money and you gain experience and you grow your network and you can get recommendation letters and part-time jobs are hard to come by in Morocco. There's also poor education. You know, depending on where you live in the country, you may not have access to great schools and great teachers that believe in you and that educate you well. And there's some graduates, even from university levels in Morocco, who lack skills and they lack good preparation for the workforce. And then there's also limited entrepreneurship due to inadequate venture capital. Okay, so there's uh, entrepreneurs who have great ideas and they want to start a business and the business would probably work and there's a high chance of success but they need the money to get it started and the venture capital industry is is very small and it's it's undeveloped in Morocco and so that can be a hindrance to entrepreneurs that want to start their own company and don't have the, the money so these are some of the obstacles that you can face. These are some of the, the challenges and there's, there's others. But I want to go back to this idea of results or excuses you choose. Because it's easy to be standing at the bottom of a mountain looking up and saying, it's too difficult. It's too hard. I can't overcome these challenges. And to send out a few CVs and complain and point the finger at others rather than taking control of what we can do. And that's the first real piece of advice I, I want to share is focus on what you can control. Okay, so let me see if I can, is there any way that Zubair, I can uh, share my screen? Would you be able to turn that feature on for me? Uh, Mohammed, uh, I think he's uh, the host. Can you please turn on the, can you make him co-host so we can sh share his uh, screen? Not anymore, I think you're the host. All right, let me see. Make co-host, That's there you go. Sorry about that. No worries. No, no worries, okay. There we go, so can everybody see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so let me. Uh, yep. Okay, let me shift this up. Okay. All right, so there's just a, you can add me on LinkedIn. I wanna to go to this, um, this Venn diagram here, focusing on things that you can control. Okay, so there's a, all these factors I just described that make it difficult. They're, they're challenges that make it hard to quote unquote make it in Morocco, but many of them are beyond our control. Okay, now we should put our focus our time and our attention and what we think about what we discuss on the things that matter on the things that we can control so take a look at this chart here and feel free i think you can take a screenshot if you want to look at this later here's a list on the left of some of the challenges i i listed that we face in order to make it in morocco there's very high national unemployment rates Nepotism, which is just hiring your nephew, even though he's not going to do a good job. Lack of part-time jobs, poor public education, and venture capital industry providing funding for local entrepreneurs. Well, little, little venture capital. Okay, now, on the right-hand side are the things that you do control. Okay, so these are the, the areas that you should put your focus on. Even though you don't control 
the na national unemployment rates and the factors that influence those, you do control your individual, your personal skills, your personality, your work ethic, your experience, your value to a company. Now, these are the things that you should focus on. So when you see something like 25% of educated Moroccans are unemployed, you can think to yourself, well, that's, that's really challenging. That's, that's horrible. When I look at France, when I look at the US, it's much lower. There'd be more opportunities there, or it would be easier to find a job there. You can also turn your perspective around to say, three quarters of people in my situation have found employment. So how do I become the type of person that can offer value to a company? How can I develop my skills? How can I make a great first impression, improve my soft skills? How can I gain some experience um, in order to be able to offer something that would make me amongst the three quarters of people that have found work? Instead of complaining, instead of blaming the government to focus on what I can, can, can do, what I control. Or the next one, you could say, oh, you know, in Morocco, it's all who you know. It doesn't matter if you've got your master's or if you've got your degree, it just comes down to your last name and who you know. Well, then you focus on making connections, on building your network, on getting to know people that can open doors for you. Make sure that you're attending events like this, that you're, you're networking, that you're participating in, in conferences, that you're growing your LinkedIn profile. You can influence who you know. Maybe your parents can't open the doors for you, or you don't live in a wealthy neighborhood where your neighbor gets you a job but you need to seek those things out. It'll be harder for you, you're at a disadvantage, but instead of complaining about that, you need to take ownership and make a change. Or the lack of part-time jobs, this can be made up for with some of the amazing organizations that exist in Morocco. There's all kinds of entrepreneurship clubs and uh, JLM and all sorts of these, these groups that are doing amazing things that especially young people can get involved in. You can volunteer, you can participate in clubs on your campus or in your community, be involved in extracurricular things. Anyone who's listening to this, this webinar uh, speaks English well enough to follow along with me. You could be tutoring young people, even from a volunteer um, perspective, and gaining experience and that could be great on your CV. You would get a lot of the same things you would get from a part-time job. There's poor public education in some areas of the country, but you control your self-education. And when I just go to the next slide here, you know, there's all kinds of free resources for self-education, like the webinar we're participating in right now. Um, there's all kinds of places online where you can learn and benefit and gain knowledge and also skills, you know, especially with, with coding and graphic design and some of the skills you can develop with simply a laptop and a, an internet connection. You, know, you can build all those things on your own, many of them free, many of them apart from formal education, not relying on the government to provide excellent teachers for you. And then the last one, I'm going to give you some examples of people who are entrepreneurs and building great companies, even though the venture capital is very difficult to come by in Morocco. So it's a challenge that people are overcoming. There's people who are bootstrapping their country. There's people who have managed to get investors in Morocco. And there's others who have gone internationally and managed to find investors who will put money into Morocco for, for their startup. So again, on the left, what you do, don't control can be excuses. On the right, these are actions that we can take to create results. Now, let me give you a bunch of examples of people who have made stuff happen. People who are, in my opinion, making it in Morocco. And the examples I'll give, they're at different places in their journey to success. Some of them already have a, a great well-established country, then they're living very comfortably, it's generating income for them. Some of them have had a, are more towards the end of their career and have been extremely successful and are, are very well off. Others are young and just starting out, but are already showing signs that they're on the right path and that they're gonna do great things. So here we have um, Hassan Anbar, 
And as I'm giving you these examples, you can laugh at my pronunciation because I'm, I'm still working on all that. But he is uh, known as the king of SEO. You know, he's a, a great example of somebody who gained skills and just with his laptop and an internet connection has found clients and customers from across the globe. And even though you can say, oh, there's not a great market uh, in Morocco or there's, you know, it's a struggle for entrepreneurs and people don't buy into SEO. All those arguments that maybe held some water back in the past, Hassan has overcome them by seeking clients from around the world. And now he hires a lot of young Moroccans. They're part of his team and they work remotely. He's got people on his staff from across the country serving his global clients. Okay, now these examples that I'm giving, these are um, screenshots from the Business in Morocco podcast. And so my co-host there, um, another, he's an American that's living in Casablanca. His name is also Ryan. The two of us interview a lot of Moroccans that are doing business in Morocco and learn from them and inspire us and our audience with their stories. And so I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of examples here but if you'd like to go and listen to their episode, you can go to moroccopodcast.com or you can find the Business in Morocco podcast on uh, YouTube and watch the videos, watch these interviews. This next, next example is a, a young girl, Sophia. She's from uh, Tangier and she was struggling to find work and was finishing up her degree and her internship kind of fell apart and she decided you know what instead of complaining and, and blaming i'm going to make things happen and so she created her own account on fiverr started uh, as a freelance writer started growing her linkedin network she did a lot of the things i'm describing which was focused on what she could do to control and she grew her um, gig business, you know, her freelancing business to where she was doing very, very well. And her parents were surprised. And, you know, she's a student without what they saw without a job. But from her room with her computer, she was making money from around the world. And then she ended up leveraging her position into a full time job um, at Gemography. And she did that primarily through her network on LinkedIn. Uh, another another gentleman from Tangier, um, he went a different route where it's not as entrepreneurial, but he he managed to land an internship, and in a short time he proved himself to go from an intern to a manager with the company, and that was based on his work ethic, his commitment, his character and also the skills that he developed. Okay, so he took his education at uh, UNSA, at ENSA in Tangier, and um, he, he learned the skills of Ruby on Rails, and through networking with them, he managed to land a great internship and a great company. So he's another example, young guy on the fast track to success. And here's somebody who worked in the pharmaceutical industry, Okay, Radia is a, a pioneer amongst female executives in Morocco. You know, she's towards the end of a, a decades long career in the pharmaceutical industry. She's worked for several global companies, multinationals that operate within Morocco. And she was uh, cutting edge in that she was going all over Morocco, even in rural areas, selling uh, drugs and products to medical clinics at a time when very few females took on a role like that. She's done very well for herself, is extremely successful. Now she has her own consulting agency in the pharmaceutical industry, but she's somebody who did that from Morocco. She started here, humble beginnings, and grew her, her business and her influence um, over the decades by working hard. There's also some entrepreneurs that are doing really exciting things here in Morocco, like Ashraf Limnini and his, his team that he works with. You guys have hopefully seen some of these businesses. They've advertised heavily in 2020, like Ocars, Point Emma, and um, Stores, Point Emma. And they do all kinds of amazing marketing with holograms and things like that. These guys are very, very visionary, doing things that you don't see anywhere else in the world. It's 
they're they're cutting edge but they're operating right here out of Casablanca they don't see uh, challenges they see opportunities when they look at Morocco they see here's an unsaturated market here's an opportunity that we face because if we tried to launch this business in a lot of developed countries in Europe or North America we'd be too late someone's already beat us to it but here there's opportunities yes there's challenges but we have this empty field, this unsaturated market before us. Same thing with uh, Mohamed Alawi. He's the founder of um, Carmine, which just uh, launched in Rabat. You may have seen that um, on LinkedIn, or if you live in Rabat, you may have seen some of their vehicles. So this is a car sharing. This is uh, part of the, the sharing economy. And um, he's, he's visionary in this. There's, there's challenges associated with this. It's harder in an emerging economy. But again, it's unsaturated. He has very little competition at this stage. And he's facing these challenges, overcoming them, growing slowly over time. He has managed to acquire funding to grow the startup. Um, so he's a great example. I encourage you to listen to his episode and be inspired. There's also a lot of people in Morocco who were living abroad. They are Moroccans who did go and study and get passports and citizenship in other countries and they, they were working abroad, but chose to come back. They chose to return to Morocco and they have various reasons. Sometimes it's because they, uh, for family commitments, sometimes it's because they, they miss their home country and sometimes they have desires to come and give back and contribute to the land that they love. And sometimes it's, uh, a little more selfish in that they recognize, hey, there's opportunities. I can take what I've seen here, I can take what I've learned, and I can bring it and implement it. Now, this is a good friend of mine, Otman Lerki. He has a, a marketing agency in Morocco, but he's also an avid reader, and he launched EnglishBooks.ma English um, about a year and a half ago. Okay, hopefully, you're familiar with, with his site and uh, have ordered books from him. Also, my, my former neighbor, Anwar Akerwash, he is the same. He was living in France, studied there, worked there, lived there, and chose to come back for some of the opportunities that, that he saw here. He's extremely entrepreneurial. He's done a number of startups, and you can see his video and hear some of the things he's tried. And then here's another example of somebody, Kareem was living in France, chose to come back, and he's launched I love you, and that is a, um, a business that does your, your laundry and cleans carpets, curtains, and they do it right to your door. They come, they pick it up, and then they return it. They have an app you can use um, and do it all through the app. All their pricing is transparent. So they're providing this incredible service. I, I had a carpet cleaned by them. They come right to your door, pick it up, return it a few days later, and very good pricing. He moved back from France to start this business. He'd seen similar type of businesses and the, the economy over there and thought, hey, this could work. Now's the time to come back to Morocco and launch something like this. So a lot of people, here's me standing in Tangier, kind of pointing across to Spain. A lot of people believe there's no opportunities here. They focus on the challenges that we face and they, they don't recognize that there's ways to overcome it. And they haven't heard these inspiring stories of people who are overcoming the challenges and taking advantage of the opportunities and they're doing great things in Morocco. So instead of escaping, I encourage you to really open your eyes to see what's around us and to seize those opportunities. Um, I've got a, a, a bunch of different content on my YouTube channel, which is called Moroc Treasure. And tips on how to find jobs and more interviews with people. Um, there's all kinds of videos there, so you can find Moroc Treasure on YouTube and enjoy that content. You can comment, uh, write me on there. I reply to all the comments. And then this is the podcast I'm encouraging you, the Business in Morocco podcast. You can find it on Spotify. Uh, you can listen to it on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts go to moroccopodcast.com, or if you prefer to consume podcasts with video, you can see it on YouTube. So just to, uh, to, to wrap up there, if I could just close with that, 
Is it easy to overcome these obstacles? No, it is not, but it's possible. And there are these examples that we have among us of people who have persevered, they've worked hard, they've used their ingenuity, and no matter where they, they began, no matter what lack they had at the beginning, they've shown that it, it is possible to make it in Morocco.